Hey, welcome to another episode. I'm Dr. Frank Asile, and lately I have been working on my 1989 Ford Bronco. I've given up on buying a new truck. They're just way too expensive for me, and I've been driving my truck which is a 2000 Ford F-150. It's nice to have because it's a truck. I can go pick up stuff, it's got the full bed, pick up material, go to the dump, but it's just super uncomfortable to drive and it really has no power anymore. And my Bronco has been sitting in my mom's backyard for like seven years. So I pretty much decided I'm not getting a new truck. I'm tired of driving my 2000 F-150. So I'm gonna go ahead and rebuild my Bronco and replace my truck with the Bronco. So I've been going down 300 miles away on weekends here and there. So I'll go down there, do what I can while I'm there and I'll bring stuff back where I can work on it and then wait until next time and drop the stuff that, off that I worked on, work on the Bronco more to get it running and bring some more stuff back. So this time around I brought back well I've already brought back my steering column. I rebuilt that. I'll be posting a video of that here soon if I haven't already. But in this video, I'm going to be, we're doing my seats. So seat belts, I'm doing my own upholstery. Seat belts, I gotta do all that. I bought some used ones for like 20 bucks. They're not red. I'm trying to get rid of all the red in my Bronco. The red is just really bugging me. I don't want it anymore. It's, it's the red, is the, the upholstery is all this red velour that was in it. I don't want this anymore. This is disgusting. I'm replacing it with some vinyl that I bought on Amazon. It looks so much nicer than this. Tough task, but I'm going to do it myself. I can save some money and also learn something new at the same time. So, for the seat belts, I'm keeping fabric, which is a gray. It's got to be cleaned. This is the original seat belt from 1989. It is currently 2024. This is old, so it's got to be cleaned. And then also I need all the parts off of it. Like I, this plastic, I'm not going to remove. I'm just gonna leave that as is. But this other stuff, I gotta reuse the red from my Bronco. I'm gonna be covering this in Hercule liner because it's just gonna see so much use. Like this is gonna be in the back area, the cargo area. This is gonna be laying through the seat and this is gonna be exposed on the seat. So people are gonna be sitting on this part. This part back here is gonna be seeing so much use in the cargo area. Painting it, it would just get all dinged up and scratched. So I'm gonna go ahead and herculine these. I'm gonna herculine these as well. These are the sides of the seats. It's gonna see some use. So I don't want this being scratched up. So why not just herculine it? Now herculining is the truck bed liner. It's what you uh, line the metal, the bare metal body of your, your truck bed. It's like a, kind of like a rubberized coating. Be using this stuff right here, truck bed coating. Protects against Scratches, rust, and fading. I'll use that for the plastics, new vinyl, and the seat belts. If you get anything useful from this video, like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. I am not an experienced interior guy. I'm just doing this for myself. I don't want to pay someone else to do this. I want to do this myself. So, let's go ahead and get into it. The shop is dirty. I have been working on different kinds of projects and I have not cleaned. So, hopefully, today I'm going to work on the project and clean at the same time as I'm going. Life's been a little crazy for me. My own craziness, not everyone else's. Or... So let's go ahead and get into cleaning the seatbelts. So I like to save money. I like to spend as little bit of money as possible or not buy things that I could just use something that's trash anyways. Just like uh, for cleaning the seatbelts, I'm gonna use this water container to clean the seatbelts. I could go buy a container, I could go buy a bucket. I just need something to soak the seatbelts in. So I'm going to put the seatbelts in. Now if this completely fails and I mess up the seatbelts, I can always just buy new ones. These ones I got from the junkyard for 20 bucks. I fill that up just a little more. Let that, I'm going to let that soak overnight. Fill it up all the way. There's probably a few different ways to clean this, but like I said, I'm doing a freestyle. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just experimenting. Set that aside. Next. Okay. 
I ordered a piece of plastic for the bottom side of my back sheet. I think I paid like 50 bucks for it. If I were to buy a new piece that this is replacing, it would have been like 150 bucks, 200 bucks. So I'm gonna spend 50 bucks and make it myself and use the cardboard for an area to clean and spray. This is the piece of plastic that came with the seat belts and this is the original one. See how it's missing this piece? So I'm not using this, I'm using this. So I have some acetone and shop rags. What I do a lot of the time is use old clothes. T-shirts work good. I've been doing that a lot so I don't have any more t-shirts to use. I'm gonna use rags. It's like five, bu five, six bucks for that roll. This probably isn't the best stuff to use, but that's what I got. I should use just regular alcohol, rubbing alcohol. Should be good enough, and if it starts peeling off, then I know it wasn't good enough. <laughs> so on the Ricky Liner can, it does say takes on anything. So we're about to take on some seatbelt plastics trim. Seatbelt trim. Cross your fingers. Claims to dry quick. Clear the can. And then we'll set this stuff aside. Now, this is a piece that those plastics attached to. This is the back seat bottom piece. The plastic I showed you earlier goes here. It used to have this one. But it's completely shot. Let's see where it lines up. So I'm gonna make that piece, cut it to fit where this is. I could reuse this, but man, it's just we're so jacked up. Could take a heat gun and kind of straighten it out a little bit or iron it. I'm good. I'm making a little one. Got texture on one side and smooth on the other. How this piece fit? I'm gonna leave it one inch longer. Barely see it, but I can see it. So I just realized you guys probably couldn't hear me for nothing. So I put on a little microphone. Now those measurements weren't the same. So I went ahead and went with the larger measurement, which is 15 and three quarters. Again, this is the piece to replace this piece, which is the bottom of the seat. It will be visible when the seat is flipped forward, not when the seat's down. I got a better marking utensil. If you guys don't know, Silver Street by Marco is awesome. Marks on most things, but it'll mark on this thing. No fun or no problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut a square that is 15 three quarters. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and go bigger and we'll just sandwich the fabric a little more. I'll go to 16. I just gotta know where my extra material is. If it's on that side or on that side, depending on where I cut it, other 
this side or the other side. Grab my semi straight edge. This is really just a piece of scrap that I got from another project. There's my line. Now to cut this, use this as a cut guide and clamp it down. Sixteen, sixteen, and this is the only cutting object I have at the time. So it works. Not the best way to cut in the world, but it worked. Now to transfer over lines, screw holes. So I can clamp that down, that'll hold. All right now, transfer everything over. These cuts, I don't think I really even need to do. So I'm not going to cut those right now. But I am going to shape this the end piece. Then I'll go ahead and drill those holes. Maybe even elongate them a little bit. So I have some play. Now to cut this, I'm going to try some sheet metal shears. If I can find them. Because I never put stuff back or put it in a spot where I don't remember. And I got these little ones. Shot at least. I cut, but eh, I don't like it. So I found my Dremel. I'm gonna go ahead and give that a shot. Should at least get me close. Now this is just a regular double cut file. Use it for metal, but you can use it for plastic. If you're work on stainless, don't use a file you use for metal and plastic. You have to use separate stuff. You don't want to contaminate stainless. So I'm good with that for now. Now, gotta drill these holes where it mounts. I might just do new holes. Those ones look a little shot out. And I can use self tappers. First, I think I want to form this curve right here. This needs to be bent. It is strange how they did this. It was the 80s. Did make some cool stuff in the 80s, but could have done better. That's why they cut out that notch right there to get past that. One thing we can do is just cut a little notch to sneak it past. We're going to go ahead and notch that. Go in three quarters of an inch. See how it works. Bad part is we only get one shot, but a notch is better than that whole giant area. All right, let's see how it fits. So, that fits. Combination square marked at two and a quarter. Make the mark. Now it's going to get a little tricky. It'd be easier if I had a leaf break and a heat gun. Not today. 
I'm going to do it how I can. because the upholstery is going to be attached to underneath and around and here and here. I want to see how much dirt has come off these seat belts. This is pretty bad. Let's check it out. More gain. So I'm better this this is disgusting nice look good Some of this cool stuff, trim lock, it's rubberized, weather stripping, but it's got metal on the inside to where it's reinforced. Pretty cool stuff, right? CVS, I kind of hold the upholstery in place. Oh, 
this. liner is dry pretty good so far but uh we're gonna give it a little torture test i went ahead and redid the seat belt clips Hercule liner i'm going to show you how to remove that it's kind of a tricky thing to take that off but you can kind of make it look a little bit nicer and kind of match everything else first i'll show you how to remove this little guy Snaps right on. Now, the tricky part is putting these back in. Kind of want to give it a little stress test. Seems like it's going to hold up. Not cracking. Not bad. I'll have to get some like string or something to pull it in. I have some electrical wire. There it is. The rest of the parts. I am surprised that that Herculiner did such a good job. So if your seatbelt doesn't want to lock, see how this locks and doesn't lock? Oh, it's leaking. See how it locks? It's that piece of plastic broken at all, it won't operate correctly. You gotta replace that piece. It's just connected to here. Actuates the locking. I don't know if they sell those, but luckily I had spares. I just found out what it was by taking these apart. So these just don't set in. They this goes through and that locks it on. I gotta press this from the other side that sandwiches the fabric. 